Hey everyone and welcome back to the news post 9.0.5 edition. Look, there's a bunch of stuff to uh, cover in the game. Some uh, some things that surprise people. Lots of small changes for you to be aware of. A little bit of a drama that popped up to deal with. And uh, some pretty damn big news coming for Team TBC. And also, this bow could be yours if you're on our Patreon this month. Plus, of course, this sticker of a lovely fluffy boy. And uh, fresh art from our team. All things for Leatherworking Month. And also, behind-the-scenes videos like these. The daily briefing for all your gaming news. And soon, more. Patrons, you're awesome. Thank you. And let's go. Alright, let's get into the most impactful bit of news. And it's a bit of a dramatic one. How many Valor Points do we earn? That was the question that PTR testers asked, and Blizzard never provided an official answer, so we didn't know their intent. Well, now that the whole thing's live, we know. 135. Be it a plus 2 or a plus 20, you'll get 135 VP. Now, this instantly went against the intuitions of many, because, of course, you'd expect to get more Valor points for doing harder keys, right? I mean, I think that's a natural gut reaction to it, and it does feel a bit odd that, yeah, you get the same amount of Valor points for running a Mythic Plus 2 as doing a Mythic Plus 15. Moreover, would then many, many players not just spam a Mythic Plus 2 in order to grind Valor points? I mean, that would be faster, right? And that totally brings up memories of people grinding out Maw of Souls, you know? Is Tyrannus Scythe the next Maw 3 chest farm? Actually, uh, not really, and there's a few reasons why. So first off, Valor Points is a capped currency. This system, for the most part, like, is supposed to be working on a 750 Valor Points per week cap, and that's five and a half dungeon runs. Now, since the best gear that you're going to be getting is from the Great Vault, any Mythic Plus gearer would want to unlock at least two Vault options, and doing so requires four dungeons, almost enough to cap. Dedicated Mythic Plus players, then, will be getting 10 dungeons for the three options, more than enough to cap. So, based off a weekly increase in cap of 750 VP, there is no reason to mindlessly grind Mythic Plus 2s. Plus, of course, you want to get gear to drop at as high a base item level as is possible. Taking an eye level 207 ring to 220, that's uh, 1250 VP. Taking a 190 to that same item level costs 2250. That's another 1,000 VP, and that's like a week and a half's cap. Plus, that cap increases by 750 a week. So you'll actually only have so much Valor Points to spend in a season, so you obviously won't want to spend it on low base item level gear. And that does mean, ultimately, you're always trying to hit Mythic plus 15 for those higher dungeon drops. Now, of course, it is a bit different right now. The Valor Point system launched midway into a season, and that means that while the cap does increase by 750 per week, well, we're starting at 5,750, and that does mean that a lot of VP can just be ground out right now. And that does mean that, yes, right now people might feel like spamming Mythic Plus 2s to fill up their Valor so that they can spend it all quickly. By the way, that would be 43 Mythic Plus Dungeons to fill up that bar. That's not ideal in some ways, but it's just an odd quirk of this system launching mid-season. Now, all that said, there is there are some odd things. I mean, Valor Points is on a cap. Well, that kind of means you can only do so many upgrades per season. Now, taking a two-handed weapon from my level 200 to 220, that would cost 6,000 Valor Points. That's actually around a third, over a third, of what you could possibly earn during an average length season. Plus, if you spend your VP early in the season, would that not be hampering you later on? Once you've maybe, you know, you've climbed to doing higher keys and you're getting, you know, ideal statted gear, but at a higher item level. So there's a few potential issues there. And those are issues that don't happen in PvP, because in PvP, upgrading is based on your skill and is uncapped in terms of currency, but it's the acquisition that is capped. Of course, because honor is your upgrade currency. So, that was a bit of a long exploration. Overall, I'd say, uh, you know, that gut reaction, we all had it. It felt really odd. It does seem really un unintuitive from a player point of view, you know, getting the same amount of Valor points for a plus two as a plus 15. But I think then from a gear pacing perspective and how this system actually ends up working, yeah, it, it does balance out in a way. So, it's an odd situation and it's a little bit of an odd system in some ways. I think really we all expect Blizzard to do an iteration on this for patch 9.1, and the issues that I pointed out, I mean, 
they really don't matter this far into his season anyway. So right now, it basically does work and it basically does get the job done. Next up, something good for Torghast. Yeah, we've got a neat Torghast event. I said it. Torghast, neat. Yep, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like Torghast, generally speaking. It's just obviously it doesn't work because of its overall meta structure. But now, basically, you'll there's a new power that you can get um, from your first anima choice, and it buffs your damage by 75% at the cost of you being able to see, because it makes your whole screen black, and then you've got to navigate with a mini-map. And I'll tell you what, it's neat, wacky things like that that actually make Torghast a bit more just fun and different, you know? You'll blast through a run with a neat mechanic, a whole bunch more damage, and it'll shake it up. So, simple as really. Look, until patch 9.1 actually goes in and tries to rework Torghast and really change it up, and I think make it a system that sort of vaguely makes sense in terms of overall meta structure, as opposed to the weird, you know, Stygia and Soul Ash and all that stuff of now, until then, stuff like this is kind of just the best that they can do. And uh, I mean, 9.0.5 did add a bunch of new like anima powers and some bouncing. So yeah, it's getting better. It just fundamentally still has the same broken structure from launch. And it's one that, I mean, the devs may as well have admitted it didn't really work out in recent interviews. So I would expect that if you're super anti-Torghast right now, there's a pretty decent chance that you should reconsider that in 9.1. Assuming they do what I think they're going to do based on talking to them in that interview. So yeah, we'll see. Then next up, some changes and tweaks and quality of life things. So mission table XP has been buffed by a whole bunch. Um, in some cases, it's like 50%, in others, 100%-ish. Now, given how leveling up, you know, new mission table uh, characters is a bit of a chore, and also, when they enter your party and they're a low item level, it actually just makes you weaker overall because it averages it. Um, yeah, leveling up faster is a bit easier, and I think that's good. Um, and, you know, I always recommend having a well-trained squad there. And that's just because getting Soul Ash, Anima, and Materials for next to zero time investment, yeah, it actually adds up over time and it's kind of handy. Also, they've added more mailboxes to Ouroboros, which is awesome. And one of the Night Fae backpacks has been updated to help with clipping. Which, I mean, phew, because I'm Night Fae, I, you know, I love that piece, but I can't wear it because it always looks janky. So the more changes there, the better. Also, there's another Escape from Sinfall, and as we mentioned in our All You Need to Know about 9.1 video, the Marks of Honor vendor has appeared in Ouroboros as well. And I think that's really good because you're getting all of that honor. You can turn that into Marks of Honor and you can go and hunt down some cool transmog pieces. That's actually a pretty nice cosmetic gameplay loop, so I'm glad they've done that. And then beyond that, a thrilling piece of news, there is a new house in the Elwyn Forest. But uh, don't expect much to happen with it because it's a Dungeons & Dragons reference. So yeah, that's um, just a lot of the sort of little things that you maybe didn't pick up on that have actually happened. Of course, all was not smooth for Blizzard with the launch of this patch. Uh, Blood Elf male faces are a bit different, seemingly because of an accidental change. So of course, expect to see Blizzard fix that up soon enough. Um, then also Soul Ash, that was not being awarded for a bit. That must have felt terrible, um, but they have since fixed that. And the Soul Rescue weekly quest was initially only giving people 250 anima when capped rather than 500. They've since fixed that. So yeah, look, a few launch issues. Um, we were surprised, you know, to see 9.0.5 be out so soon. Our internal estimate was actually next week. So I guess, you know, the lack of communication and things like VP acquisition and some of those launch bugs, it maybe does suggest it was rushed out a little bit. And um, I would imagine that's, at least from the devs' perspective, just because they, they just wanted to get that VP system in players' hands as fast as they could. And they probably also knew that the faster this patch comes out, well, the faster it's off the public test realm. And the sooner they can actually test 9.1, which of course means we'll get 9.1 sooner, which is, I think, absolutely what we all want. It's sale time! Shadowlands is 20% off until March 14th. Yeah, it's like a three-day sale, right? Pretty damn short. I'm not sure what spurred this sale on. Of course, it is the norm in games coverage world to see a sale for a vaguely new game and then be like, aha, this means they're screwed. Uh, no, like not necessarily. I'd say it could be they're maybe a little bit under their sales targets or whatever. You know, we are approaching the end of the quarter and pretty often companies will do little promos, things like that to um, help get their numbers up to what their targets are. You know, it's pretty standard practice in the biz. And honestly, it's not a bad time to get started 
started with Shadowlands for, for new people, uh, because, you know, season one is fixed up a bit, and a character made now would, uh, you know, after a little bit, be pretty much in perfect shape to hit 9.1. So that's probably what they're doing. It's a decent time to get in with this patch. They probably want to capitalize on that patch news and perhaps get some of their quarterlies up. Then we have got big classic TBC news for assets have appeared on the PTR that reference the classic and uh, TBC split plus the paid character cloning service. So what does that mean, right? It means we're getting there. That's what it means. And what's more is that there's a new data mine strings in the classic PTR that reference May 18th as the transition start date. Now, Wowhead, of course, do point out that that could be a placeholder, and yes, it absolutely could be. But hey, imagine pre-patch hitting May 18th, because when that happens, you'll be able to start up your new Blood Elf or your new Draenei on one of those TBC servers. Um, and, you know, that, that, I guess, could be pretty neat, something to do. I mean, for somebody like me, who had to skip out on Classic because of... Um, time being something that is quite annoying, yeah, pretty damn good second chance. Now, that's actually not all the news. There is the Classic Plus survey. Yes, the idea of continued development and changes for Classic has been floated in a player survey, and as it happens, we actually discussed this last week on, um, on our show. There's a very, very high chance, it's over a 90% chance you've, uh, you've missed it, you don't know what's going on, so what I'd say there is subscribe to our Clips channel and uh, check out the link, which we'll drop down there, if you'd like to um, hear more of our discussion and learn about what a Classic Plus could actually be. I think it's really potentially very exciting, could be a massive thing for Blizzard, and as somebody who respects the hell out of what old school RuneScape does and their community engagement, tell you what, it's an exciting prospect. And, uh, and, uh, that's it, that's it. That's where the video's done. I have nothing more to say. If you want to get some pretty damn cool loot and uh, stuff like, you can check out the Patreon if you'd like to hear our Classic Plus discussion and many other things from game sort of aspects to little lore, sort of quick little mini lore things that we do, head up the Belly Their Clips channel. It's linked in the main channel page of this channel. And uh, yeah, that's where you'll get a whole bunch of just quick hitters, you know, a quick shot of WoW discussion in the arm, uh, usually two to three times a day. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.